in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed eternity cannot fathom and comprehend your wisdom and your power and your grace the earth is your throne the heaven is your throne and the earth your footstool bless him we are come to mount zion Ask him to give you an encounter tonight. Father, give me an encounter even by your word. Let the scrolls be opened. Let the seals be broken. Cause me to see. Is someone praying? Give me total liberty tonight. For in Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray Amen. father we ask tonight that you will speak to us we have come with hearts opened we have come with our spirits opened we've come with our minds opened we pray in the name of Jesus that this will be one service that will transform our lives indeed bring us liberty by your word and let jesus be glorified in jesus name we pray god bless you please be seated thank you very much we've been on a teaching series titled let them have dominion the goal is to bring the saints into higher levels of authority even through light through understanding um, tonight is part two but because of the peculiar because of the nature of tonight's teaching um, we're discussing I promised us that we're going to be discussing on altars just help those under the anointing so we'll be looking at the mystery of altars it is the part two you can put in bracket let them have dominion i decided that we'll give it this title so that those who would want to pick up this very teaching and listen to it they would know where to find it right so it's still part two of the series but we'll call it the mystery of altars genesis 35 from verse 1 to 7. light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like menorah light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we only rise and we reign through light. That means when God wants to help a man in this kingdom, he will shorten the distance between you and your access to light one of the ways that god shows us mercy in this kingdom is to shorten the distance between you and the light needed to bring you from the ground and to enthrone you 
he said the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light hallelujah genesis 35 we're reading the first seven verses and god said unto jacob arise go up to bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto god that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of esau thy brother reading to seven verse two then jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him put away strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments verse three and let us arise and go up to bethel and i will make there an altar unto god who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the day which i went verse 4 and they gave unto jacob all the strange gods which were in their land and all their earrings which were in their ears and jacob hid them under the oak which was in shechem verse 5 and they journeyed and the terror of god was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of jacob verse 6 now so jacob came to Luz, which was in the land of canaan pay attention that is bethel he and all the people that were with him the last verse now it says and he built there an altar and called the place el bethel because there god appeared unto him when he fell from the face of his brother genesis chapter 8 and verse 20 and noah builded an altar unto the lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar we're reading to 22 and the lord smelled a sweet savor and the lord said in his heart i will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither will i again smite any more every living thing as i have done 22 he says and while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease hallelujah so we have i decided to um, there are so many things to teach but we'll hopefully um, carry over some of those to part three there will be a part three to this so but tonight i want to really focus on the subject of altars and there are three things we are going to be looking at number one we want to understand what altars are number one this is our first goal for this discussion we want to understand what altars are from a biblical standpoint number two we seek to understand through this teaching tonight the relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints is it true that there is a relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints and then number three we will be learning how to raise altars and how to pull down altars if we're able to achieve these three then we have done justice as far as this teaching is concerned tonight one more time to understand what altars are number two to understand the relationship between altars and the dominion of the saints and then number three to know how to raise altars and also to learn how to pull down altars in the name of jesus christ all right so let's begin our teaching the word altar a-l-t-a-r the word altar is mentioned about 364 times in the bible using king james as a reference the word altar is mentioned about 364 times in the bible and when when you mention the word altar the average believer is thinking of a shrine 
is thinking of a herbalist or is thinking of some superstitious thing i hope you realize and as you'll be learning shortly that the entire concept of altars did not come from satan and was never used by satan for a long time are we together the idea of altars was god's own idea let's look at a few scriptures the entire book of genesis has the word altar mentioned about 10 times and just to set the basis right i'd like us to quickly run through some of these scriptures media so we have a lot to do please let's work together so that we'll save time genesis 8 22 we or 8 20 we already looked at that while the earth okay 20 just go to 20 it says noah builded an altar unto the lord he built an altar unto the lord now do you know it will interest you to know that this was immediately after the flood how do you come out of a flood and the very first thing you are doing is to build an altar not to celebrate not to discuss not to laugh at those who perished he went straight and he built an altar genesis chapter 12 from verse 7 and 8 genesis chapter 12 the bible says and the lord appeared unto abram and said unto thy seed i will give this land and there builded he an altar unto the lord who appeared unto him verse 8 now and he removed from thence unto the mountain of the east of bethel and pitched his tent having bethel on the west and high on the east and there he builded an altar unto the lord and called upon the name of the lord genesis chapter 13 verse 3 and 4 genesis 13 3 and 4 and he went on his journey from the south even to bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between bethel and Hai. uh-huh verse 4 unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and there abraham called upon the name of the lord genesis 13 and verse 18 still the same chapter verse 18 now and abraham removed his tent he says and he came and dwelt in the plain of mamre which in which is in hebron and he built there an altar unto the lord genesis chapter 22 and verse 9 please be patient as we lay this foundation genesis 22 and verse 9 this is abraham and isaac and they came to the place which god had told him of and abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood genesis 26 25 genesis 26 25 this is isaac now and he built an altar there and called upon the name of the lord and pitched his tent there and there isaac's servants also dug a well genesis chapter 33 from verse 19 and 20 we're looking at from the law of first mention that every context of the altar as you see captured in genesis had nothing to do with any demonic interaction 19 and he bought a parcel of field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of hamor shechem shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money verse 20 and he erected there an altar and he called it El Elohi Israel Genesis 35 we're reading verse 1 verse 3 and verse 7 Genesis 35 verse 1 and God said unto Jacob arise go to Bethel and dwell there God himself is asking a man now make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when you ran away from your brother Esau verse 3 the Bible says he encouraged his people and said let us arise 
and go to Bethel and let us make an altar unto God. Verse 7. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because God appeared unto him and he fled from the face of his brother. This, this is the entire mention of the word altar in the book of Genesis. In fact, let me give you one more bonus scripture. Exodus chapter 17 from 14 and 15. Exodus, this is Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 5. In honor to that covenant, Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. You would see that from the entire book of Genesis, you do not find any reference to altar being made or done with any demonic proposition. That every time you saw the idea of altar, it was number one by men who feared God and it was unto God. In fact, in some of the references, it was God himself who told the men, make an altar there. And you would notice from the scriptures that we read that every time they erected altars, number one, they erected altars and called upon the name of the Lord from that point or they erected altars to honor something spectacular God had done. Either a covenant he gave them or a promise, some kind of promise or before or after disaster, you would see that they erected altars. Now, the subject of altars has been addressed across boards we've had people as always you know approach it scripturally and intelligently but we've had people also approach it um in a way that is not entirely scriptural and so when we mention the word altar most believers especially believers that are quite sound in the word immediately frown at the concept because the only idea of altars we have is the idea that has largely been communicated by the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. And I confess to you that not much justice has been done as far as bringing a sound biblical exegesis on the subject of altars. Many have used it as a ritual to delve into extra biblical practices. Many have used it as a ritual uh, sadly to manipulate people but I have taught you here that just because a spiritual concept is not communicated properly or is used um, to manipulate people does not mean that concept is unscriptural here is the Bible speaking to you the entire book of Genesis we checked the the word altar and every time it was used it was by men who feared God and then it was unto God the God of the Bible. What then is an altar? Please write. What is an altar? A few definitions. Number one, an altar is a place, a platform, or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. I'll take it again. An altar is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds that is the first definition of an altar that it is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds look chapter 1 please from verse 10 and 11 just to buttress on that definition the bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the time of the incense and then verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense hallelujah zechariah the priest having that encounter and an angel comes but the angel comes and stands at the altar at the time of incense so it is a place it is a platform or it is a system 
that allows interactions between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm on legal basis it is called an altar number two second definition an altar is also a platform for authorization of laws and authorizations of spirits to function upon the earth an altar is a platform for the authorization of laws l-a-w-s and the authorization of spirits to function upon the earth so an altar is a platform that gives authorization to spiritual laws to function an altar is a place a platform that gives authorization for spirits to be able to function the last definition you have that down an altar finally is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is a platform where covenants are activated and where covenants are maintained i gave you three definitions let me do a quick recap that number one an altar is a place a platform and a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm number two an altar is a platform that authorizes spiritual laws and authorizes spirits to function remember i have taught you that based on the law of territory it is illegal for any spirit to function in the earth realm that does not have a body remember our teaching last last week we stated that this earth was made for men not just men but for entities with physical bodies that means if you do not have a physical body you do not have a legitimate authorization to function on the earth and then if you do not have a human body dominion was not for you are we together dominion is only for spirits that are hosted in human bodies that means even if you are a spirit that is in the body of a lower animal you are authorized to function because of that body but not authorized to walk in dominion so the condition to be a man therefore is that number one you must be a spirit number two that spirit must be hosted in a human body and then number three that spirit must have a solical connection of the mind containing the will emotions and intellect any creature that does not have this combination in one place cannot be called man are we together an altar there are many people who have risen to notable levels of excellence manifesting superhuman abilities and commanding strange levels of results that seem to dumbfound people both in the church as believers and then people outside of the faith life the level of invincibility that is shown in their exploits and their results seem to keep people at a loss how are these people achieving this whether it is in politics and governance whether it is in business and finance whether it's in spirituality of all sorts herbalists and all of that now there are those who have lived in denial as to the reality of such a concept of altars then there are those who have admitted that there is such a concept but they are clueless as to the dynamics of the workings of this altar many of us today i submit to you are victims of altars many of us today are more affected by altars than we can imagine and the teaching tonight will open your eyes to see i will be showing you why it is possible to pray and fast over certain issues and then nothing happens many people have tried binding and casting situations many people have tried quoting scriptures and speaking many people have done dry fast all kinds of fast fruit fast and yet certain situations seem to stand and stare them at the face this situation seem to make jesus look powerless seem to make the faith life uninteresting 
but you see the bible says it is through knowledge that the just will be delivered not through assumptions not through a good heart it takes knowledge i have studied this subject myself and in studying it to prepare um, for this meeting i was amazed at how many other things about altars that i did not even know myself hallelujah now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions altars can be men altars can be non-material platforms i'll take it again altars can be physical monuments like we have in the bible and um you know altars can be institutions that means a whole institution can be an altar altars can be men human entities can be altars and then altars can be non-material platforms that means a platform that is spiritual in context you cannot find any material expression to it and yet it exists are we learning i wrote down here the patriarchs commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars the patriarchs those who had gone before us commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars and like i've told you altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men is someone learning already listen let me tell you the truth if god grants us grace and we understand this revelation and pray the prayers we are praying tonight you will marvel and wonder at the levels of results that you begin to command in your christian life an individual can be a victim of negative altars we're coming there don't write just listen a church can be a victim of negative altars a nation can be a victim of altars individuals businesses and corporations can be victims of altars write this down please the major assignment of an altar the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization please underline it if you are writing using a pen the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic i'll take it again this is a major point i'm expressing now please don't forget this the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and to give continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or it is demonic that is the primary assignment of altars the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic please look up do you understand the meaning of this 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 point i just stated that the assignment of an altar is number one to give authorization to a spiritual activity but number two to give continuity that means anything that is recurrent and remains is powered by an altar this immediately becomes the litmus test to check the presence of altars good or bad are we together please don't forget this one this will be a the foundation of our discussion the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth 
whether godly or demonic every time god made promises or made a covenant or said he was going to do something to the patriarchs and to their children immediately they would build an altar so that even when they were not there there would be a platform for the continuity of that statement is somebody learning now write this down please you can know the presence of an altar you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether good or bad this is powerful the consistency of patterns the consistency of occurrences whether they are good or bad is the scriptural litmus test for the presence of an altar wow you can know the presence of an altar in any life in any family in any region that means if certain good things keep happening to you regardless the surrounding circumstances there is an altar that is powering that that is happening if certain evils and certain patterns keep reoccurring regardless the effort you are putting is because it is being powered by altars is someone listening for example salvation salvation is being powered by an altar that is why any day and any time anyone confesses jesus you don't have to be there an angel does not have to be there to supervise it there is an altar already that supports that ordinance that whosoever believes in the name of the lord that person shall be saved and the altar that powers that statement is the very throne that god sits on are we together now yes that means you don't need to travel from america to nigeria to be saved like to give your life to jesus christ regardless location regardless time regardless age regardless gender you can listen to a message of tl osborne even though the man has died but the message is powered by an altar because the truth is communicating there is from the word of god and if you believe that message you can repent there and give your life to jesus and the altar that was connected to that statement makes that statement true in your life immediately if salvation were not powered by an altar it would be impossible for all men to be saved another example the blessing of the jewish nation the blessing of the jewish nation is powered by altars that is why some of them as individuals today as a nation when you go to israel many of them still practice judaism but in truth many of them are not born again they have not believed in the lord god of heaven yet that covenant being powered by an altar still insists that the jewish nation will remain on top and above whether they are in israel or they are in africa whether they know it or not they just find out that you can stand with a jew and there seems to be an advantage that he himself cannot explain the power of altars please pay attention because we'll soon come to the one that concerns africa are we together look up please salvation is powered by an altar that is why jesus does not have to come physically and start running from room to room and say look at me i'm the jesus you are talking about are you interested from one position and one location the effect becomes the same everywhere his name is called now 
an example of negative altars are you ready the one we saw is an example of positive altars an example of negative altars all kinds of wrong addictions all kinds of negative patterns are powered by altars all kinds of wrong addictions please write all kinds of negative patterns are only there and remain because there are altars that power them let me list a few of them for you listen if i am listing this and it ever affects you just know that whether you admit it or not it confirms the presence of an altar are you ready number one it mysterious diseases and infirmities the presence of mysterious diseases and infirmities whether as an individual or a family or a territory powered by altars mysterious diseases and infirmities usually these diseases you see are also passed through the bloodline father had it mother had it brothers had it now there may be a medical explanation and medicine is there as a symbol of god's mercy but i am telling you using higher spiritual intelligence those sicknesses can only remain because of the presence of altars number two all kinds of sexual perversions please write all kinds of sexual and immoral perversions are powered by altars it does not matter how sincere the victims are that's not the issue is that there is an altar that powers it all kinds of sexual perversions that's why you can hear of stories of an adult you know doing something funny with a minor and a baby and it does not make human sense but this is about altars I'm sorry to say it but this is also what has generated into these various versions of perversions we have in our society the victims do not even know what is drawing them that's the point I'm trying to tell you it's not just about your will alone is that there is a force that is operating on legal basis number three depression and mental health issues most of this depression and mental health issues now there are things that have to do with fatigue and all of that but for most people they do not know that most mental health issues need more than counseling it is the presence of an altar when jesus saw madmen listen watch what the madman in gadara look, notice what the spirit did he was always hiding in caves and hurting himself depression and mental health issues number four witchcraft and idol worship here you go witchcraft and idol worship you will be amazed at how many christians today love god sincerely but something keeps drawing them back to still revisit foundations of idolatry it does not matter whether you're a man of god it does not matter whether you're a businessman there's something in you that still makes you comfortable there's one small portrait in the village that was kept there it was handed from great-grandfather to grandfather and they said if you speak to that portrait it can bring results you can serve god and give but when the going gets tough as you travel to the village as you are passing you just see that thing and something within you witchcraft and idol worship look up please there are you've you've seen us pray for these people during miracle services there are many people some of you looking at me right now based on the ordinances of priesthood you are supposed to be the one they hand over some of those things to but you just said i've given my life to jesus christ i'm not interested and the altar said it's not about whether you are interested or not find out how i came into being first and you just generally sweep it under the carpet and he says all right you go and you find out all kinds of things begin to happen i'm not scaring you there is victory at the end of this teaching but you must know what is there 
You don't gain victory by running away from the truth. You gain victory by knowing the truth. Stagnation and delays alters. Stagnation and delays alters. Believe me, alters. Near success syndrome. Have you seen that happen to people? I, I look for a word. There's, there's no better word that captures it the way I want. If I bring all this English, you will not really get it. I need you to get it the way it is. Near success syndrome. That people see it but never possess it. There are people like that. You do an interview to the last point. Then you don't go again. You start a business and negotiate to the last point. Then you don't go again. You will always see the beginning of things, but never see the end of them. It's an altar. Believe me. You can look around and know people in your life who are excellent starters, but the power to continue and even finish anything is not there. They can start 30 businesses. They will never be able to keep one past two or three months. They can start different companies. They can even start ministries and yet it does not work. Altars. Barrenness and short-lived success. Barrenness of all kinds, especially biological barrenness now. And short-lived success. Short-lived success. That means you enjoy every blessing but it does not last there are some of you here the moment you see good things happen to you you even start crying because you know as a track record that good things never remain you buy a car as soon as you are rejoicing in two weeks that car will now hit a convoy are we together they will bring you out and say you should sit down on the ground first and you find what is wrong with me as soon as you are preparing to go abroad your visa just comes out next thing you will see police they will say theft was happening somewhere and they join you with all those to interrogate for the next two months your passport has been seized until you find out what is going on i know you may be laughing but pay attention short-lived success barrenness how many people do you find Th there's nothing medically wrong with them there is no reason why they should not have children some of them may go as far as getting pregnant and if you ask them and they're honest they will tell you about their experiences somewhere within that pregnancy period here come strangers visitors in the night either molesting them or doing some kind of thing and that ends it there are many more expressions but these ones are some of the major expressions can i be sincere with you there are pastors who are victims of altars there are families that are victims of altars this thing does not necessarily have to do with being a wicked person or being kind this is why god is granting us spiritual intelligence God is my witness and I lie not. Years ago, I traveled somewhere and I met someone. I asked him, what does he do? And he says he works with a security company, PhD. God is my witness. I mean it. PhD. And out of frustration, he said he, he can't leave his family like this. He has to just find a way. I said, no, now this, this cannot be God. Because in terms of value, that person has paid his price. Do you agree with me on that? So it's not about laziness. I know someone who got a huge contract. The person was so happy and was rejoicing. Just when they mobilized them a bit, he now secured a loan from the bank to add it and began the contract and they revoked it. ABCD, we discovered your documents are not complete and they left that person with a pile of debt with the bank.
in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is not of God and everything being powered by any altar this is the night where we will scatter it once and for all please sit down hallelujah so you know the presence of an altar in a life by the continuity of patterns and occurrences not to play with your mind but great grandmother was raped grandmother was raped mother was raped different scenarios the same effect it is more than just coincidences you are the only one who is calling it coincidences have you seen people who spend 10 15 years abroad even 20 years and you go and find them in the village sitting down and you are saying sir tell me the story they will tell you in 19 this and that i was in america i was a friend with the mayor i was a friend with this one i even got an award they will take you back to enter into that clay house and show you all the things and you are saying from whence come this poverty and he said my dear son you don't know and the young man will be gyrating just a fresh born again person and say it doesn't matter i pity you and return back 10 years later to that same place and wonder what is wrong listen how many of you know about a man called jabez in the bible ladies imagine if jabez was your life partner no, 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 no. Don't insult the guy. He won at the end of it. I'm just saying, imagine. You would be surprised that after dancing and rejoicing, you start going down and not know why. Can I tell you this? These are some of the things that prophets detect by prophecy. And because many of them, respectfully speaking, are not sound in the word, they call the victims witches and wizards. They are just detecting the presence of altars, but it does not mean the individuals are necessarily bad. It is true. Association can help you partake of altars that is upon the lives of people too. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. When the realm of the spirit is against you, it will also be against anything that supports you. When God was against Jonah, remember Jonah chapter 1. Jonah was running away. He simply entered a boat. All the people who were the passengers there did not know that such and such a person. Now forget who was against him. The most important thing is that the realm of the spirit was against him. You would think he only jumped into the belly of the fish alone. But they had lost things because of one person. The same way Jesus was inside a boat and those who would have died were preserved because of his presence. Do you know the meaning of that? It means because of what you are learning tonight, everybody around you will now finally be a partaker of this blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The formula always remains that when he sends a word to Jacob, he intends that it lightens upon Israel. So for some of you, as you are listening right now, the Holy Ghost is telling you, this is what I've been trying to tell you. Are you seeing what kept mama down? Are you seeing what kept your dad? What kept your siblings? Now you are the reed that God is taking out of fire. It's important to pay attention for the sake of those who have gone ahead of you and for the sake of those who are coming. Please sit down. Go and read the history of America and find out that when they are, well, that nation was about to be born, they erected an altar and called upon the name of the Lord officially and said, God, we are officially saying you are the God. That's why regardless what happens, that altar still speaks. Because based on the law of cause and effect, Many nations should not be where they are economically. Yet there is an altar that seems to veto these limitations. Hallelujah. Now please look up. Many of our forefathers 
great grandfathers in and territories from the sincerity of their heart many of them out of fear of being victims of wars poverty and whatever many of them went to meet the devil because it was these deities that many of them knew and so they met them on legal basis and had all kinds of fraternities and partnerships and different altars were enacted today the people who were part of that program are long gone but altar does not know time no 10 years is only 10 years to you 200 years is only 200 years to you read your bible where jacob had an encounter in chapter 28 that was where abraham built an altar abraham built an altar there now his great grandson is his great his um great grandson came there and slept in the night whether he slept or not that altar was working every day it just so happened that he now slept and found something that was already there was a procession angels ascending and descending is someone learning altars can affect individuals altars can affect families the same way the same way authentic godly altars listen there are many many people who turn their homes into altars they were not very born again but they supported missionaries they turned spaces in their houses to become a place for missionaries to come and stay during crusades they did not know what they were doing and some of those missionaries prayed there in their silence and said oh god i am praying that long after i am gone let the great grandchildren of these people not know shame since they supported the gospel you will find one rough boy one day roaming around not being interested in jesus and the speakings from that altar will come and fish him he will find his way to a crusade ground and you'll be wondering what happened have you seen many people who are not serious with god and yet it seems like god cannot leave them they will run away you will still find them when you want to prophesy they are the first you will bring out and they are not serious you yourself will be annoyed and say what is this thing that god is always looking for them how altars work let's hurry up now pay attention i want to show you a mystery i want to show you how altars work ah may god give us understanding Amen. let me tell you you see this our fathers of faith the level of results they are commanding believe me if you think it is just based on intellect think again you see this our nation and africa the kind of trouble we are in if you think it's just a political trouble think again do you not see the consistency of the operations regardless what government comes it is an altar my dear people more than just who is there or who is not there do you not see what happens to people during election it's as if something just comes on people and nobody knows what he's doing until after everything everybody starts complaining please pay attention please pay attention how does altars work how does an altar work please write this down all satanic altars are powered by one major altar all satanic altars are powered by one major altar and i want to reveal it to you now all satanic altars systems of authorization systems of communication right they are powered by one major access point or one major altar now forgive me to make reference to my dear film lord of the rings remember that our movie now remember if you've not watched it 
I don't know what to tell you, but you just follow. God will grant you understanding. Remember, I, I, I hope I understand the film really very well, but I know that there were many rings that were given to kings, and then there was one ring. Is that true? That powers the remaining other rings. This is what I'm trying to teach you. That all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar. That means no matter what you do to all other altars, if this one altar still remain, you wasted your time. Now, this is the mistake that most people have, that they just keep rebuking things individually. Poverty, this one, that one. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. Pay attention now. It's called the altar of sin and iniquity. Write it down, please. Judges chapter 6 and verse 1. The altar of sin and iniquity. This is the altar that powers every other satanic altar. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years. What was the cause of the problem? Evil in the sight of the Lord. The altar of sin and iniquity. And hold on, before you assume any self-righteousness, I want to tell you there are different levels of sin. There is your personal sin. When it has to do with altars, there are territorial sins. And there are sins that come from bloodlines. So don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me. The, the altar of sin and iniquity. Hosea chapter 7 and verse 1. I found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully. Look up please. Let me, let, me, let me read it for you. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. I was about to come and heal them, but there was something that was discovered. When I would have healed Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered Romans chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14 Romans chapter 5 the Bible says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin are we together now look how serious this issue of death is and yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in he says so then death passed upon all men for all have sinned we're reading to 14 13 now for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law 14 now this scripture blessed me so much nevertheless he said death reigned it didn't just come it now came and even reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression do you know what this means this is he's talking about us now the effect of that original seed it came and reigned even after them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him who is to come the altar of sin and iniquity John chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2 John chapter 9 the Bible says and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now hear what the disciples said verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin are you seeing the disciples they went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause remember these guys had been under the mentorship of jesus this man's condition there must be something that has authorized satan he said who sin this man or his parents there was something they had known about the teaching of jesus some versions will say who sin him or his father because the word father means source so is it him or his background 
both of them can create an effect in his life who sinned dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 